I start to sway or have a little step in the music, just don't worry about a thing. The kids are getting to me. That's what it is. Let's sing it now. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Days are filled with sorrow and fear.
update day. We're growing every day. A little bit fewer, more kids coming every day, and uh, it's going, it's going really well. So uh, just pray for uh, that we will finish with. Well. Amen. Uh, prayer chain request. Uh, I'll go through through these. First of all, an answer to prayer. We were praying for uh, uh, Mary Alderman. Uh, that is uh, Julie Lawson's uh, niece. And they had the tumor removed. They had the colon. Everything worked out. And she doesn't require a bag. So that's an answer to prayer on that. So that's a wonderful thing. Uh, Arlen Lester had his procedure on Monday. They took a liter of fluid off of his lungs. So he's home now. That's an answer to prayer, too. And pray for Carolyn for peace. Um, Elizabeth Gray asked for, for prayer for Brandon Ramirez. 20-year-old uh, was in a car accident with a baby on the way and uh, is over in ICU at University Hospital. Just pray for healing this for his family. Uh, and then also pray for Jolie Trevino, the last thing leaving the house with unknown adult in the middle of the night. Any update on that? She not found necessarily, safe. Not necessarily home, but found. Okay, good. So that's an answer to prayer, and we just kind of work on, on that other situation. Yesterday we had a prayer request for Eloy. Um, Steve and Teresa's next door neighbor is 89 years old, taken by ambulance because of COVID. And then today his wife tested positive for COVID. So pray for Eloy and his family. Also, I got a prayer request before uh, church tonight for a a little baby called a uh, little infant named Remy. Uh, he also has COVID and is having brain damage because of that. Uh, pray for Carla and Trenton, the parents, and then also for uh, uh, Daniel and that whole family situation there. Yes, Josephine. For your gout and your... Okay. Pray for Josephine. Uh, she's experienced another episode of gout, and so just pray. It's painful. If you ever had it, it's extremely painful. So pray for that, and also for her arthritis. So uh, we'll continue to pray for her. Continue to remember Sherry Gustenberg, uh, Rock Mims, Wanda, uh, Elsie, all those that have other health issues there. So those are the prayer requests. If you have any unspoken requests, you raise your hand. Okay. Uh, continue to pray for these and then also for those for salvation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, without your faithfulness, Lord, to us and your mercy and your grace, we would not be here. And we have no hope. Lord, we thank you for answers to prayer. We thank you for successful surgery for Mary. And Lord, we just ask that you just help her, Lord, to just continue to recover. Father, I pray that you be with you, Lord. And that you help him and you give him grace, Lord, and give him strength to recover and be the doctor, give him wisdom, be with his wife now as she's tested positive for COVID. Father, I pray to be with this little one, Remy, who has COVID. And Father, suffering other damage, Lord, I just ask that you just uh, put your hand of healing upon them and be your will, Lord, for your glory. Be with the parents, Lord, and Carla and, and Trent, Lord, I just ask that you just help them, Lord, through this time. And Father, they just draw closer to you. Lord, they need your grace. They need your restoration. Lord, I pray to be with Daniel, Lord, and just help him also. Father, I pray that you just be with um, Arlen and help him, Lord, to continue <coughs> to gain strength, Lord. We thank you for the success of the procedure. And Lord, we just ask to be with he and Carol, and Lord, just to uh, uh, give them grace and give them uh, peace at this time. Be with Janet and Rick and, and Leah as they're gone. That you just give them safety and help them, Lord, to have a, a successful trip. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, Josephine. Father, I just ask you to take away this gout, Lord, and you ease the pain. Father, be with our front, her arthritis, Lord, and Father, that you just restore to health. Father, I ask that you just be with uh, uh, others, Lord, that have health needs, Lord. I pray that you be with Wanda, that she help her recover, be with Sharon Gooseberg, that she be able to get out of rehab. Father, for what Mims, that you give peace of mind. Father, I pray that you be with others that uh, have I've been told they're terminal and they're facing eternity, Lord. I look up, lift up J.J. Farrell to you right now and just ask that you give him and Sarah peace at this time and give them grace. Father, I pray that you be with uh, Leela, Lord. Just help her, Lord, uh, with her cancer diagnosis. 
And Father, you just give her peace. Lord, I ask that you be with the unspoken request. Each hand that was raised and heard, ask that you provide your grace and your mercy. Father, I pray that you be with those that have uh, uh, hospital procedures tomorrow. Uh, Lord, I think of Rose and help her to recover, Lord, and Charles, Lord, and you just give him recovery. Father, I just ask that you just uh, uh, be with those. Provide your direction, provide your restoration, provide reconciliation. Provide healing, Lord, and, sal and salvation to lost family members. Father, provide your protection and your direction and your provision. Lord, I ask you to be with our church. Father, we thank you for the EBS and the kids that are coming. Lord, I thank you for each worker that's here. And Lord, I just ask us to continue to give strength for the journey, Lord. And Father, we would finish well. Lord, I pray that you just be with uh, other churches, Lord, that are dealing with health issues, Lord. I think of Leon Valley. I think of Hilotus. Independent Baptist Church, and Lord, I just ask and just give them grace and healing. Lord, I pray and send revival, Lord, to our church. Father, help the excitement, Lord, from this week, Lord, to continue, Lord. And that, Father, that we would just uh, be closer to you, Lord, and be more uh, your servants, and Lord, to love you even more. Lord, we pray that it be our country. Lord, I just ask you, our leaders, Lord, that they would do right. Father, that uh, uh, you just help them, Lord, to uh, follow you, Lord, in your word, Lord not political expediency. Father, I ask that you just be with uh, situations, Lord, and conflict, Father, for Ukraine, that you just bring peace to that, and that you just uh, help the righteous. Lord, we're a needy people, Lord, but there are, Lord, there's people that need your salvation. And Lord, I lift up Wanda, our man, Wendy, and, <clears throat> and Amanda, and Zach, for John and Gerald, Dan and Valerie, for Terry Burgett and Brett, for Julio and Mitchell, for Ray and Ray Valdez and Roy Garza, for June and Brianna and Chris and Billy, for Harold and Amanda and Andrew and Paul, for Carlos and Vincent and Carlos and Dee, for Pete, Allison, Scott, Travis, Mike, Steve, Mike's son, Father, for Ernest and Oscar, for Margarita and Natalie, for Michael Ramos, for Tony and Tony Jr., for AJ, for Dana, Patty, Kenny, Father, for Sarah, for Delante. Lord, I pray that they would come to a saving knowledge of you and have their spirits healed. And Father, then you could restore the other things that are broken in their lives. Lord, help us tonight, Lord, as we look at your word, that we would be encouraged by it, Lord. And Father, we know that you're coming back. Lord, I just ask that everything that's said and done, Lord, now, we just bring glory to you. Lord, find Satan. Father, help us to be attentive and help us to be followers of you. Lord, we thank you. And we ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. And kids can be dismissed from the back. Tonight, take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62, last uh, two weeks ago, uh, we went through Isaiah 61, and we are in the prophecy talking about Christ as the Messiah. And you know, salvation is good news. And I want you to specifically pray for BBS now in the next couple of days. Because the next couple of days brings the salvation message to these kids. And so pray for saving of souls. But we see in Isaiah 61 that Christ fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy of the Messiah. In verses 1 through 3 we see the mission of Christ. He's empowered by the Holy Spirit and authorized by God. It says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Christ's mission was to preach good tidings. It was to bind up the brokenhearted. It was to proclaim liberty to the captives. <coughs> and it's the opening of the prison to them that are bound. That was his mission then. It's his same mission now. And folks, we need to be free of Christ. We need to be free in Christ. And once we're free, 
Don't go back. Don't go back. We also see that Christ's uh, mission is to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 6, 2, it says, Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. He also is to come to bring the day of vengeance. And we know Christ has come the first time. He's coming back. And when He comes back, He's going to set everything in order. And He will comfort all that mourn. Christ's mission is to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion for beauty, for ashes, for joy, for mourning, for praise, for the spirit of hate. God wants to change your life. He wants to take all the things that tie you down and burden you. Come unto me, all ye that what? Labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To serve Christ should not be grievous. To serve the Lord is. And it is a burden. And we see that this passage here was literally fulfilled when Christ walks into the temple in Nazareth and He reads this passage. And could you just imagine could you imagine that event? He says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Oh, folks, tonight scripture can be fulfilled in our ears tonight. We just need to follow the truth. Verses 4 through 11, the rest of the chapter, we see the restoration by Christ. And this is talking about before he reigns a thousand years, there's going to be rebuilt dwelling places and renewed provision. Redeem the position and restore honor. God wants to clean us up. God wants us to be able to sit, as it says in Ephesians, that we sit on in heavenly places. Righteous practices. A remaining heritage that will never fail. He will give us regal attire. We talked about that with Satan as the accuser and Joshua the high priest had dirty robes and Christ gave him clean robes. That's what Christ wants to do in your life. He doesn't want to clean up just the outside. He wants to clean up the inside. Put on the new man. And then a recognizable promise. So that is Isaiah chapter 61. In the last chapter of the Bible, Christ says, Behold, I come quick. <clears throat> and John finishes and says, Even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. My message tonight is on Isaiah 62. And it's about even come, Lord Jesus. Isaiah is a book of prophecy. Revelation is a book of prophecy. Isaiah's prophecy was near term and far term. And I still can't imagine how people are just a little locked in the Old Testament and they don't understand what Christ did already. You don't understand who Christ was. I can't understand why that happens except for the depravity of man. But tonight, we're going to see Christ's zeal for the restoration of Israel. When God makes a promise, it's going to get completed. It's going to be fulfilled. And we need to understand that we're, we have a book that is absolute truth. And we need to follow it. We need to encourage others to follow it too. So there's two points again, because it's a short chapter, and I thank you for that for VBS. Okay? It is a little. They have more energy than we do. But you know something? Christ has zeal for us, and we need to have zeal for lost people too. And in verses 1 through 9, we see the zeal of Christ for Israel. They are God's chosen people. That position has not been taken away. And so in this first passage here, it says, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. 
And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Now, we know from His first coming that this hasn't happened. It happened in Christ. He was the light of the world. Everyone is lying dark. He fulfilled prophecy, but this is strictly end time prophecy here. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. For thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be merry. That's where dwelling in Beulah land comes from. It comes from this verse. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee, and as thy bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Let's read that one again. Ye that make mention of of the Lord, keep not silence. That preach itself right there. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord hath sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to, to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it. And praise the Lord. And they that have brought in together shall drink, have brought it together, shall drink it in the courts of thy holiness. See, here we see the zeal of Christ for Jerusalem. The Biblical timetable is set. And this is coming closer every day. The whole thing can start tonight with the trumpet. You ready? Are you ready? So here we see, in verse 1, we see the extent of God's zeal. He says, For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. In Psalm chapter 83, verse 1, the desire of the psalmist was this. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Here we see that God's willing to do this. He wants to do this. But you know something? He wants his people to cry out to him. In this case, he wants Israel to cry out to him. But you know something? He wants us to cry out to him too. So we see the extent of God's zeal and that He will not hold His peace. The second part of this is He will not rest. You know, this prophecy was written thousands of years ago. It hasn't occurred yet. But that doesn't matter. It's going to happen. It's going to take faith for those. And you know, we may not see it. I want to see it. I believe in my lifetime, I will see it. But you know, we need to be ready for this. In Psalm 121, verse 4, it says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. You know, sometimes you might think, well, God just doesn't understand what's going on down here. Oh, yes, he does. The fact is, do we? <laughs> do we really understand what's going on down here? So we see here the first part of the first verse, just the extent of God's seal. And then we see here in verses, the rest of verse 1 through verse 5, there are six 
purposes for God in this. And I'm just going to briefly go through them. The first one is to bring forth righteousness and salvation. You know, God wants to give us salvation. Not so we can do our own thing. Galatians says, don't do that. He wants us to be a holy nation, a peculiar people. He wants us to be unspotted from the world. He wants us to help others. Memory verse today. He wants us to help others. He said that I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as what? Brightness. Okay? And that the salvation thereof is as a lamp that burneth. Okay? You know, Israel failed when they went in the promised land. We often fail too. You know, they were supposed to be a nation of priests. They were supposed to show Jehovah's grace and mercy and provision and guidance. And they were supposed to be a holy nation. And by them being different in the world, it was going to draw other people to God. He didn't do it. You know something? Do we do it? We need to do the same. We need to draw people to God because He saved us. He's changed us. He's given us beauty for ashes. The joy for mourning. He's changed our entire direction. And why are we silent? We can't be silent. In verse 2, the first part of this, Basically, it says here, it says, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. Folks, the lost and ungodly world needs to see our righteousness today. Amen. They will. You know, you go ask somebody to go do something, and they don't do it, and then what do you say? Well, I just guess I have to what? Do it myself. You know, if we don't do it, it's not going to stop. Christ is going to do it. It's going to happen. You might as well be on the right side. Amen? Amen? So it says here, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. So we need to show others what He can do for them. Folks, we call that today our testimony. Don't forget his benefits. The second part of verse 2 is the third thing. To make us different. Folks, the reason the church is not making a big difference in the world is because it's not much different itself. We need to be different. The handful of us that's in here tonight can change things. I want to encourage you to be like. You know, the early church was no bigger than us. And look at what happened to them. Yeah. To be different. It says, and now should be called by a new name. You got a new name. We have a new name. Which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Ah, we preached the message about how God names his people as believers and disciples and Christians. And verse 3 is to bring glory to Himself. You know, I think that there's two ways to build a big church. One's the right way, one's the wrong way. The wrong way is to have a charismatic leader come in and bring glory to Himself and that everybody comes, you got to hear this dude! No. The way to do it is to bring glory to God. Amen. And that means that every member here, everyone that comes here, should bring glory to God. Right. And that'll make a difference. Yeah. And that'll make a difference. To bring glory to Himself. Thou shalt be a, also a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Number four. Number five, to change our circumstances. You know, how 
many of us want some things in our life to change? Raise your hand. Oh, really? Everybody's just content? There's some people out there that, ah, I'm, I'm just happy exactly with them. <coughs> I'm sure. Someone came in and gave you a whole bunch of money. You would like that, right? Okay? But look at what God's got. He's got this infinite grace. He wants to give that to us for His glory so we can make a difference. So we can show others what He can do for us. What He's done for us, He can do for them. And to show forth His righteousness and salvation. And so what we have here is we have two phrases. You know, sometimes we're getting in such straits that we don't think anybody cares. And we think everybody has forsaken us. And he's going to say here, it says, Thou shalt nowhere be called term forsaken, but you should be called Hepzibah. Now, that's a city in Georgia. Okay, and he's smiling because she lived there. Okay. Wrong Hepzibah, okay? Wrong con, okay? Not, not, not going to happen there. Okay? But the issue is this. Hepzibah means my delight is in her. See, we're more forsaken because we forsake God. God has no delight in us. But if we turn to Him and we do what He wants us to do, God is delighted. That's my kid! If we're not doing that, then Satan's saying, that's your kid! Look what he or she is doing. Oh, folks, God wants to put His delight in us after we accept Him and we get changed by Him. Because He wants to show the whole world that He's real. There's a whole world out there that basically says there is no God. He is not real. You're foolish to believe in this stuff. But he says, no. He says, I want to change you from forsaken to having delight. And secondly, from being desolate to being married. Desolate means that you have no hope. There's no offspring. There's no prodigy coming. There's, nothing. There's no generation after you. So, God wants you to be married. Hmm. God the Father's bride is Israel. The bride of Christ is the church. God the Father, God the Son is in the one. Guess what? In the end times, in the thousand years, we'll be one too. We'll be at one too. And so he wants to, he wants to have us be married so we can be productive. And then lastly, to bring joy to him over us in verse 5. It says, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over them. You know how we can gain God to rejoice over us? We rejoice in him. Ephesians, first Thessalonians says, Rejoice what? Evermore. And everything gives thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. So we see here in verses 1 through 5, the last part of verse 1, the purposes of God's zeal. In verses 6 and 9, we see the priority of God's zeal. See, God knows when it's going to happen. It's going to happen. He said it's going to happen. The issue is do we live life as if it's going to happen? He wanted the nation of Israel to be expecting and what did he do here? He set watchmen on the walls in verse 6. He said, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never what? Never hold. Wait a second. Never hold their peace. Does that sound familiar? For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. Verse 6, he says, I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall what? Never hold their peace. You know what God does? We ought to do. What God proclaims, we ought to proclaim. When God doesn't rest, we don't rest. No matter if you're tired of BBS, don't rest. Okay? And we need to be watchmen. It says in 2 
same thing. He said, I've set you to be a watchman on the wall. And you need to warn people. And if you warn people, their blood's not on your hands. But if you don't, their blood's on your hands because you didn't give them warning. Folks, look at all the opportunities that we miss. We're not very good watchmen at times. Israel wasn't. Israel wasn't. And he said, I accept to be watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And then in verses 7, in verse 7 it says here, and give him no rest till he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You know, the New Testament has a thing. Work for the night is coming where no one can work. He says, we're supposed to labor. And he says, when the Lord comes back, we find His servant so doing. We sing the old song, we'll work till Jesus, Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. These watchmen are supposed to do this until what? Until they were taken out. Or God made a saint. The end goal of God's master plan is found in verses 8 and 9. The Lord has sworn by His right hand and by the arm of His strength, surely I will give... You know, I'm tired of people taking away all the stuff that I have. Amen. Amen? Okay? You know, we pay more for... We have things taken from the government that take stuff out. For ungodly purposes. Right. Okay? Personally, I want that back from God. Amen. I want my country to go back to Amen. God. Amen. But the issue is, it says, surely I will give, you know, and, and the other thing is, is that sometimes we don't have enough because we just don't give God anything. And we went through Malachi and we talked about that. Well, my man robbed God. Because you're robbing and you're tired of that's what I have. Same thing happened to Haggai. <laughs> Why is things not going good for you? Because you're not doing what God told you to. We're supposed to come back and build the temple, build the walls, not do it. You built houses, you didn't build the temple. So the issue is, is that he says, surely I will give, no more give thy corn to the meat for thy enemies, and the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine. It says, but you that have it will have it. It will be there. The end goal of God's master plan is for God to own it all. And we will be His stewards of it. So this is the zeal of Christ for Israel. In the last couple of verses here, verses 10 to 12, we see the results of God's zeal in Israel. In verses 10 and 11, there's basically a command here. Get ready. Be ready. Be ready for this. You know, Christ, parable after parable after parable. Matthew 13, parable. Seed and sower, wheat and the tares. All these things about what? End time judgment. Judgment's coming. It's coming. Will you be found doing that? Will repent for the kingdom of God is what? At hand was the message. Well, you know what? We need to get rid of obstacles. What Israel needed to do is they needed to get rid of the obstacles, the religious things that they were doing and not the relationship things that they need to be doing with God in verse 10. It says, go through, go through the gates. Hmm. You know, you'll never be able to do something when you're sitting at home. You've got to go through, go through your front door. Go through the gates. Okay? Prepare ye the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out all the roadblocks. Gather out all the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a sign so they'll go out too. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 13 says, And make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. See, we need to get rid of obstacles. 
those obstacles in our life are what? Sin. We all have probably some sort of sin that is besetting to us. And Paul in Hebrews 12 said, lay aside what? Every way and the what? Sin that does so easily beset and run the race. You run a race when you have a sign at the end that this is the end, go forth. So, get rid of the obstacles and start looking for God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Right there. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In verse 11, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Ah, now we know exactly where this is. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. In the Gospels, in Matthew, and also in Mark, where it talks about the baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist, who's predicted in Isaiah, has this message. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. They asked him a question. They said, are you him? Are you the Messiah? He said, nope. But there's one that's coming behind me whose shoes are not worthy to unloose. To unloose. He is it. And in Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, it says, I indeed, this is John talking about, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Folks, it's time to let the Holy Ghost work in our life, and it's time to get some fire in our lives. We need to have the seal that Christ had for Israel in our minds. It says, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. You know what he's going to do? He's going to get rid of all the obstacles. He's going to make the path straight. And gather his wheat in the garner, he will burn up the chaff with the unquenchable fire. What is that? Christ didn't do that the first time. He does it the second time. What we're reading about, talking about, preaching about right now, here in Isaiah 62, is exactly what John the Baptist was talking about there. It says, Then cometh Jesus of Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. So here's John the Baptist, and what was he doing? He was out there doing what God had told him to do. He was doing it faithful. He was being a zealot for it. People thought he was a lunatic out there in the wilderness in loincloth and eating locusts and honey. They thought, what's going on with you? And he's out there preaching this message. And the religious leader, leaders come to him and he says, look, who called you here? Okay? You need to do this too. And as he's preaching, and as he's working, and as he's ready, Christ comes. Christ comes. He was ready. He was ready. He had no obstacles in his life. He didn't care what people said to him. He went to where God wanted him to go. And he was looking to God. Oh, folks, we need that today. So the first result, or looking forward to this, what should we do? We should be ready. And then, to be ready is also to be renewed. In verse 12, and it says, And they shall call them the holy people. God's going to set this thing straight in the end. This is the way God wanted it. This is the way God wanted the garden to be. Man blew it. Okay? This is the way God wanted it in Israel. Israel blew it. This is the way God wants it in the church, and we're blowing it too. But we can change. We can be ready. We take the obstacles out of the way. It says the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, let 
the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We need to tell people that we're redeemed. And thou shalt be called sought out. A city not forsaken. Oh, folks, you know, we get excited about something that we find. Some new cookware set, or whatever the case may be, and we get excited about that and we advertise that to people. What about advertising God? We get excited about things in the world. Why don't we get excited about God? We have zeal to do that. We need to have zeal for this. <laughs> this is more important. Yeah. Let God work in your life. Amen? Let God work in your life tonight. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this time. Lord, I just ask you this time of invitation. Father, help us, Lord, to follow you and let you work in our life. Help us, Lord, to have zeal like you. Help us, Lord, to be ready and be redeemed, Lord, in preparation of the hope that you're giving to us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the things you've done. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for a time that we can make a decision for you. Be with us, time of invitation. We ask these things in Jesus' name.